this is my uh, greenhouse and shop. Uh, I built it mostly from salvage materials. I did buy some polycarbonate glazing for the greenhouse section and uh, some plywood for the roofing and loft area in the shop. Uh, the building's 16 by 16 and it's uh, framed on uh, 6 by 6 posts. It's got one center post uh, that's 6 by 6. Uh, and I'm setting up the battery uh, testing equipment uh, in there and running an Ethernet cable out there so I can uh, upload the files and everything. <coughs> I've got my own power system now. Uh, there's four 100-watt uh, uh, solar collectors on the roof, and I've got them set up to provide, to provide 40 volts and uh, 10 amps to a battery bank. It's got 12 uh, batteries that are 12 volts each, and uh, the battery bank is set up uh, to provide uh, 36 volts to a 36-volt uh, inverter that provides 120 AC. Uh, the charge rate uh, from the solar collectors to the battery bank is uh, 10 amps uh, divided by 12 batteries, so it's a little less than 1 amp per battery. Uh, it's a real simple system. There's no um, voltage uh, regulator or anything like that. It's, uh, there's an over and under voltage uh, shutoff in the inverter with uh, uh, warning lights and buzzers and uh, that's that's ba basically it right there and, and that provides uh, uh, most of the power that I need uh, in the winter time when the days are short and cloudy there's a, there's a problem but I have a backup generator uh, for that so uh, the next slide is This is the view from my trailer over to the shop, and as you can see, I'm running the PVC pipe with the Ethernet cable in it through the uh, garden area. And uh, I had over a hundred old tires and rims here when I bought the place, and uh, I gave a lot of the good ones away to people who needed spares uh, for the car, and I um, junked a bunch of them, and I made some planters out of uh, some of the bigger truck tires here for the for my garden. And, uh, and then, of course, I filled them with compost that I make myself. And um, uh, the bare ground that you see there was is a, a fill because there was a low area in the lot. And I, uh, I brought in a bunch of uh, truckloads of fill and filled that area in. Okay, now we're looking back the, in the other direction from the shop to the trailer. And uh, as you can see, I've completely covered the trailer with Reflextex uh, insulation. Uh, that insulation is uh, just bubble wrap with mylar on uh, both sides of it. And of course mylar is a, an aluminum coating uh, that's uh, put on by vapor deposition. Uh, it's a really good insulation and it keeps the trailer a lot warmer in the winter and cooler in the summer. And uh, the trees setting in a, the trailer sitting in a clump of trees uh, which when they leaf out provides a nice uh, shade too. But um, I basically, for my heating and cooling, I just use a fan to move air in or out of the trailer from the outside to uh, heat or to cool it uh, as needed. And then um, uh, the next cool thing about the uh, uh, Reflextex, because of the aluminum, it uh, has created a Faraday cage around my uh, trailers, which uh, in case we have another Carrington event or something like that happens, uh, I'll have some uh, some uh, protection for my electronics and stuff. Uh, and it also, uh, we're getting an increasing amount of electromagnetic radiation uh, in the environment from our cells and from space. So uh, I've, I've got a shield against, uh, against that too. Um, another thing that I do inside the trailer, I have uh, a grounding pad um, beneath the ta table so when I'm uh, sitting in the trailer at the table, I have um, I can ground my feet. I also have a grounding uh, pillow on my bed, so I, I'm grounded at night. And then uh, I have a, a grounding tack on my shoe that connects to a contact on my ankle. So uh, when I'm out working and walking around, I'm also grounded. So I'm pretty much grounded 24 hours a day. Uh, the other interesting thing that I do in the trailer uh, as an experiment is to, I created a magnetic field around my bed and which I did with uh, 50 neodymium magnets and um, 
and I, it really helps me uh, sleep a lot better, uh, especially if I'm in a, a free electromagnetic uh, environment. I think uh, that and the magnetic field inside of there with the grounding uh, is responsible for uh, why I sleep pretty well. Okay, this is the uh, lower level section out in front of my trailer and uh, what I want to point out here is the retaining wall there to the left that uh, separates the two levels. Um, the way I built that was it's a technique called Super Adobe and uh, the system is uh, it's cheap and it's strong and durable and uh, easy to do although it's fairly labor intensive because you have to move a lot of uh, uh, materials so <clears throat> but uh, anyway uh, how it's made is uh, basically from sandbags uh, that you stack up and uh, then you uh, uh, stucco over top of that and I built a, um, a dolly to help me uh, do that or I modified a dolly to help me do that um, and I bought a 1500 foot roll of uh, sandbag uh, material plastic and uh, I've modified the dolly to put a roller at the bottom of it instead of wheels so it rolls uh, along the top of a bag and I can so I can fill a bag and then uh, lay it down with the dolly and then uh, move the dolly on top of the that layer and uh, fill the bags up and uh, or fill the bag long bag up and uh, drag it along the top of the wall and it, to lay down the bag uh, right in place so uh, anyway, you, you put a little barbed wire section pieces between the bags so they don't slide on top of each other uh, for reinforcement and then you put your stucco wire over top of that uh, and then you just stucco it and then uh, paint it and it's, uh, it's a really good building technique and you can shape it uh, as you want. Uh, people are building houses out of it. It's a, it's a, a good building thing. I may build a house uh, here out of that. You can also see that I uh, used the same technique to build the terraces and the steps uh, from the lower level up to the upper level. Uh, on the terraces over there I have uh, collard greens uh, growing in the bottom terrace with asparagus in the second terrace and a uh, little cedar tree in the, in the top. This is my uh, super adobe fish pond that I constructed with the same method. Uh, and it's a 20 foot diameter and 2 foot uh, deep and it's about 6 uh, layers high and uh, I had a, a pile of cinder uh, dumped right in the center of the pond and then I built the wall around the, the pile of cinder so I didn't have to haul it very far and then what I cinder I had left over I spread out in, in the bottom of it and then I dug the the bottom up with a, a pick and shovel and uh, got out the big rocks and uh, roots and things like that and uh, then I leveled it all out uh, mixed some cement with it uh, watered it down with a spray hose and uh, tamped it uh, down with a hand tamper and to create a rammed earth uh, a bottom in the pond and then uh, I uh, spread a layer of uh, reinforced stucco mud uh, that with fiberglass in it uh, on top of that and uh, then I sealed it and uh, uh, painted it with three coats of uh, waterproofing uh, uh, hydraulic uh, waterproofing I think it has uh, 12 psi or something like that it was, it was the, some of the best rated uh, it's a plastic acrylic uh, uh, waterproofing um, and then I painted it uh, after that uh, on the outside and the inside and so there's my uh, and I'll grow tilapia in there and uh, maybe some chlorella algae too and uh, and then filter the algae out uh, to eat uh, with a, a filter system water filter system This is an experiment I did to uh, see how small a circle I could uh, build with the Super Adobe. And uh, of course the more you 
try to bend those long bags, the harder it gets. So, uh, but that's about as small of a circle as you can build with the technique, and it's about six, uh, six feet in diameter. I used it to uh, make a little uh, planter around the two white oak trees that I had there along the road, and uh, I've got uh, a ground cover called uh, pink carpet inside of there, and uh, the scientific name is uh, Delisperma cooperi, and it produces some beautiful purple flowers uh, all summer long. So, uh, just wanted to show you that. Here I want to share a real easy way to eat uh, fresh vegetables all year round. Uh, what I do is take root crops. Uh, this is a, some beets here in a container. And uh, you don't harvest a beet, you grow the, you grow the root crops, but you harvest the, the tops. And uh, they're actually more nutritious than uh, the roots are. And so uh, you just pick a, a few leaves off of there a day, pick the older leaves so that you don't uh, do any stunning of the plant, and uh, you just keep uh, picking a couple of leaves every day and put them in your salad. And you can do this with uh, basically any root crops, uh, you know, carrots and beets, uh, onions, uh, whatever. Uh, so, and you just have to water them and you can keep them alive for a long time. The next uh, slide is a, a picture of some onions that are uh, three years old now and still growing fine. Here you can see uh, this, my uh, three-year-old uh, onions and uh, if you pull some of those out of the ground if, you'll find out that there's no bulbs down there or I mean really a, un, like an undeveloped bulb uh, because you keep uh, harvesting a, a few leaves at a time from the top and the bulbs never really develop. They keep flowering every year. They're wanting to uh, to uh, reproduce and stuff, but you, you 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 prevent that from happening by doing this. But uh, and the onions seem to get stronger and stronger too, which is interesting. Um, and uh, down to the left of that, you'll see a, a wild California poppy that came up through the cinder of my floor. Uh, so anyway. I guess my main point here is that the powers that be have used money to enslave us and control us. And the only way we're going to get out of that slavery is to become more self-sufficient for our own needs. And this, of course, requires work, but so does working for the enslavers and other people in general. So uh, we need to get out of debt and stay out of debt and we need to prepare for the social and environmental changes that are already happening and because they're going to increase uh, in speed and severity uh, the earth is beginning to flip its polar fields now and that takes a, a long time, more than a lifetime so we need to prepare for that for your children's sake if nothing else and uh, one of the best ways, things you can do is learn to produce your own power. And a self-charging um, battery system is the, the easiest and cheapest way to go. You know, the power grid is going to fail uh, eventually, in most areas at least. And uh, then where are you going to get your power from? What if you can't buy batteries? What if you can't buy gasoline for a generator? What if you can't... Uh, buy or build a solar system. Uh, can you build a wind power system cheaper? Um, there's not a whole lot of cheap uh, options out there. You know, and the sooner you get started, uh, the better off it's going to be for everybody. Because we can link these systems together once people have got them. Okay, that's, that's my message. Thanks for watching.